This is a quick vid in response to Rick Clay. May he uh, rest in peace. May he be rewarded for all the dots that he connected. Uh, in his last radio interview, he said that he believed that Buddhism was the New World Order religion. This is my response to him. I disagree. I think it's the Baha'i faith. Uh, I'm going to show you some things, see if you don't agree. On the face of it, the Baha'i faith looks like the perfect path to peace. Uh, right now they are touting themselves as being the fastest growing religion on earth. Let me show you something really quick. Okay, this is from the Baha'i.org website. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit here. It says, the Baha'i community today numbers some 5 million members resident in 189 independent countries and 46 territories. Its rich diversity embraces people from most of the planet's races, creeds, and cultures, including over 2,100 different ethnic groupings. To make this possible, the Baha'i scriptures have so far been translated into some 800 different languages. Now, I'm just going to ask you, does that sound like a natural, organic growth of a religion? I mean, personally, that sounds like an international or a multinational uh, product rollout. I mean, that's what I'm seeing here. This is a very structured, organized, systematic rollout. Okay, and what you see here is the Baha'i World Center located on Mount Carmel in Haifa, Israel, of all places. The, it is said that the, uh, the founder of this religion, Baha'u'llah, uh, he claims himself to be a prophet in the line of all the prophets after Moses and Christ and Muhammad and all the others, all before, and uh, claims himself to be a prophet in the same line, the same truth, and uh, founding this fourth monotheistic religion. They throw in a good bit of Buddhism and Hinduism and all any other kind of major religion too and just sort of make this big religion soup that uh, a, is supposed to appeal to every single person on earth basically. You get the gist. Okay. And just for fun, I went and looked up Mount Carmel on the internet, and this is what I came up with. And see this picture? This is a picture from Mount Carmel, and it's overlooking the valley or the plain of Estrelon, otherwise known as the plain of Armageddon. That's kind of weird. Uh, and if you click this link, Armageddon, what do we get here? Uh, it talks about how um, this is where in Revelations it's mentioned that um, it's the gathering place of the great army um, that will then move to Jerusalem to fight the great battle. Yeah? Huh. Okay. And also, isn't it interesting that Mount Carmel is uh, where Elijah made his stand against the false prophets? Okay, so I'm seeing a serious false prophet situation going on here. Maybe it's just me. Okay. Okay, now I realize a lot of people could care less about the whole religious aspect of it. So let's just look at some of the other aspects of this Baha'i faith. The Baha'i faith is the first religion in the history of the world, as far as I'm aware, to uh, function without a clergy and on a democratic basis. Baha'is believe that where we're at right now is in an age of transition where we're moving from that society based on nation states to a global society, a society based on a global identity. Nations will eventually s give up some of their sovereignty and turn it over to a world government. Uh, would you please give me your own Baha'i ID? My Baha'i ID number is 000-3414. Good morning. Uh, I I would like to become a Baha'i, and I was wondering if there's someone I could talk to that could uh, direct me or, or guide me in some way. Okay, can I ask you something? Can you write to us an email? Write to you an email? Just to say to us that you want to be a Baha'i, and we will see if we can give you an interview. Ten days later, the Baha'i World Center in Haifa scheduled the meeting with the staff at his Tel Aviv apartment with a Mr. Smith. Alarmed by the response of the Baha'is, Asaf wanted to make sure that no matter what happens, it will be documented. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, a privilege to actually be part of a specially chosen place. The world center of the Baha'i faith is here. I mean, it's never going to move. It's going to be in Haifa forever. And uh, the Israeli community is in fact doing what I think is an incredible job of defending us.
because we don't actually believe that peace can be achieved through military means. <laughs> Uh, interestingly enough, the Baha'i teachings um, uh, ask the Baha'is to um, avoid military service, combatant military service, on behalf of their nations, but do permit them to be part of uh, a future world uh, police force. Uh, a future world uh, police force. In, in every organization, particularly religious organizations, there is always some form of dealing with uh, harmful dissidents. That certainly exists in the Catholic Church and in other religious organizations. Within the context of the Baha'i Faith, those who uh, attack the authority of the institutions, uh, which are there to maintain the unity of the community, are uh, expelled from the community, and the community is asked not to uh, not to speak with them. Uh, and this is because disputes are forbidden in the community. Disputes are forbidden in the community. And on such a fundamental issue, uh, the, only, the best way to avoid a dispute is simply not to have a conversation. And for those that really get out of line, maybe they end up here at the Universal House of Justice on Mount Carmel. I don't know about you, but I mean, that just looks like some seriously foreboding building that has some serious plans for the future. I mean, what a haughty religion. Okay, here's another little blurb from Baha'i.org. Uh, you could even pause this and read it for yourself. It all sounds really good, as much of their stuff does. That's how they pull people in. But then they slip in the weird, uh, the weird part that is disturbing. For me, what is disturbing is this part, the introduction of compulsory education. Okay, this one's a fun one. Here we are at the Baha'i.com. Okay, let's enter in. We're going to click English. And I don't know if you can read this. Hopefully you can read this. Let's scroll down. Look along the left. Da, 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 da. All right, let's scroll down. Oh, look at that. Towards the New World Order. For any of you who may have been in any kind of doubt. Um, but that's not where I want to go. I want to go here. A system for global governance. All right, and let's scroll down a bit, and let's go grab this little quote here from Baha'u'llah Baha himself. In every country where any of this people reside, they must behave, behave, towards the government of that country with loyalty, honesty, and truthfulness. You must behave with loyalty. And if you don't, remember we've got the Universal House of Justice. We were surprised to read about Dr. David Kelly's suicide affair. Kelly was an MI6 agent and a weapons inspector. He didn't fit to what we knew about Baha'i faith and its non-involvement in military and politics. Dr. Kelly was a virologist. He'd worked at Porton Down, the secret British chemical weapons research establishment. He'd done tours of duty um, over a number of years as a UN weapons inspector in Iraq. He'd made as many as 40 trips to Iraq. The question of David Kelly and the faith of Baha'i is increasingly interesting. Okay. This was my first pilgrimage to Haifa, Israel in uh, 1982. 
That, of course, is the uh, Universal House of Justice. They were just building that when I was there that time. This is the obelisk on the top of Mount Carmel, where eventually we will build a temple. It's like, you know, protecting a jewel. But this jewel at the moment on, on Mount Carmel in Haifa isn't really yet ready for exposure to the whole of the light of day of the world. Mm. When that point is reached, then I think the rules here will change.